Okay, so um, in this next video, we're actually going to just straight up just take this export and put it into a 3D coat in Photoshop so we can actually start the fun painting process. Um, but before we do, I did a quick edit. I realized this was kind of dark on my last video. Um, I tend to actually work with a bit more desaturated colors and they're usually a bit darker because that's just, I think, how I naturally see things. Um, so I actually ended up bumping this up just a little bit more. Um, I actually did it by increasing the uh, the brightness and the vibrance of the thickness map and then also maybe upping the the diffuse color just a tad bit um, I'm still a little skeptical about how blue this is so maybe I can maybe try to dial this back before we start um, probably like that hmm. either way we can paint it out so I actually like what that ended up doing right there yeah, that's like crazy blown out, ain't it? All right, let's stick with this. Um, I can always add more color if I need to. So, um, let's export it. I ended up creating a setting for my game called Coffin Rot, since the game's Coffin Rot. Um, like I said, I do this this thing where um, I do a lot of capitals. Um, I use diffused instead of base color, and then I also do capital matte. So, I just set it up so it takes the texture set, which is that plugs that in so I actually have to go ahead and delete the mat off that but that's what I'm doing let me save these really quick uh, excuse me sorry I just had some Chipotle so <laughs> I'm gonna be burping a little bit hopefully it doesn't get too annoying um <laughs> anyway um so name that let's go ahead and export this um set the location I'm just gonna go ahead and do my wheelbarrow location select folder export um 1024 yep that's what I want and then, oh, before we do it, actually, um, quick little lesson on MIP mapping. If you're if you're trying to figure out how much MIPs your game's gonna do, I think we usually MIP down to about four times, maybe. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just do eight because I have some pretty compact stuff in there. So I'm gonna do dilation plus diffusion because I think it ends up looking a bit better. Um, yeah, even actually now that I think about it, though, I think 3D coat's gonna end up trashing that. So we'll see what happens when you bring in the 3D coat, but. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I keep doing this wrong. We're going to do... Make sure you actually click what you're trying to export as. Um, there's that. That's ready to go. Let's open the output directory. Um, bring it on screen. You see right around here. I'm going to actually delete all of these guys. Oh. I didn't realize it's grabbing the name of the project, too. That's kind of strange. Um, oh, that was when I exported it earlier. I'm sorry. Okay, so this is what I want right here. So I want to delete those because I actually might end up using them in the uh, in the 3D code file. But um, at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. So I'm actually going to grab the – actually open up 3D code here. Oh, you know what? I have to swap my monitors on this. Let me do this. Line monitor? Is this it? What the heck? You're not what I want. There we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> so I gotta go ahead and grab my stuff here really quick. I'm gonna set up my drawing monitor. So, it's kind of the same setup as last time when I'm sculpting. I have the mic kind of back behind the monitor, so I apologize in advance if it sounds a bit. Uh, a bit more muffled, but hopefully this isn't too bad. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do new. Um, what's the UV map? map? I want to see what this ends up looking like. Actually, I uh, paint UV map mesh. Navigate to where I'm going. I'm working with a wheelbarrow. So let's go ahead and grab the WB low. And I forgot that 3D coat is jank and doesn't like mm, FBXs. I always thought that was really annoying. I always use like OBJs pretty much. Let me actually really quickly open up Maya. Sorry, I should have been more prepared for this. I haven't used 3D coat in ages, but this shouldn't take too long. I 
actually gonna um, actually I don't know why I did that. Let me do this. I gotta clear out the map because it's gonna end up bringing in this AO map on here too. Um, do that. Just clear that. Okay. So that's ready to go. Cool. So um, same thing as usual. Export selection. We're gonna do an OBJ export this time. Navigate to where you're exporting it. We'll call this uh, wheel barrel <coughs> OBJ. Doesn't really matter because it's kind of a dud thing just to paint on. Now we do this. So new paint. Grab the wheelbarrow OBJ. Um, set the correct size right here. We want to keep our UVs. This is super important. Um, I usually actually don't even set this until I looked at it. Keep UV. Yeah, so this looks good. So we're going to OK and see what happens when we bring this guy in. Looks OK. Um, so the first thing we want to do is, since we exported the base out of Substance Painter, we want to actually bring it in. So we're going to do Import Color Albedo Map. Um, I want to do that. That's the diffuse, so hit open, and boom, there it is, right? So now we are officially ready to start painting on this guy. Um, before I do, I'm going to do this thing called Edit All Layers and Exterior Editor. So what this allows me to do is open this, and it's going to send it over to Photoshop. <clears throat> and so basically I can have a live link between Photoshop and this. Um, and it allows me to kind of swap back and forth between the two. I think 3D Coat's nice because you can see it in world space. And if you have a lot of split UVs, like, look at this. This is insane looking. Um, bring this to the top. Up the opacity just a little bit. You know, you get a ton of UVs like this. Um, it's going to be a nightmare to paint on. Um, and I know I made a lot of unique UVs, so it's kind of a bad example for this whole tutorial, I feel like. But I, I wanted this to be kind of the hero prop for the for the next world we're building. So um, this is nice just for, it, you know, because you can actually bring over. I'm sorry. Um, you can grab some brushes that you like to use. I like to get this guy turn on uh, angle jitter. And then turn on transfer as well. Yeah. So then you'll start just painting on this whenever you need to, right? So. Okay, so that's, yeah, so that's working. Um, <clears throat> and so what you can actually do is, I'll just to show an example, um, we'll just draw some like crazy stuff right here. Hit Control S to save it. And then when I open up this guy, it'll actually propagate out to it. And then just be aware though, because if you do something like, let's say you actually don't like this and you want to erase it and you bust out the eraser and then you come back to Photoshop and then you do some more editing and if you forget to link it back up and you hit save it'll totally overwrite that again um, so anytime you do something like edit wise man what the hell yeah um, I will say I don't have a whole lot of good stuff to say about this program it's kind of jank sometimes So yeah, anytime you want to uh, send something back, you want to go up here again and do edit, edit all layers and exterior editor, or control P for short. Um, there's also something really cool you can also do here is let's uh, <coughs> get this. <coughs> you do edit, um, edit projections and exterior editor. So I turn off the light map because it's I paint in flat lit because. I mean, we're doing hand painted, right? So if it looks good in flat lit, it's gonna look pretty solid also inside of a lit environment. Um, so let's say I wanted to set something up where I'm like, okay, these handles need to be a bit brighter, which I think they do. Um, so I'll start brightening up the handles a little bit. Let me grab some of these guys. Oh, maybe something dark. Try and push those details a bit more. Whatever, just, just something, right? Throw it down, hit control save, <clears throat> come back to it, 
and it takes your projection you just did and it paints it on there which I think is really neat actually <coughs> so I think that's pretty dope okay so I guess at this point um, you're all set up to start painting um, so I think what I'm gonna do is try to get the feel of this again because I haven't really painted it in a while um, and then I'll probably just do a recording of it and then I think I'll probably come back to it and talk over my decisions and stuff like that when I come back. So we'll call this video done then. We'll call this the setup and export and all that stuff and then in the next set of videos it'll be me just painting over the actual mesh itself. So I will catch you guys in the next one.